Hello and welcome to the second part of this rocket video tutorial about blueprint. In the previous video tutorial we made a really simple blueprint uh, which contained a barrel that exploded once it took a certain amount of damage. Uh, in this video tutorial we're going to be extending on that a little bit. Uh, after the barrel gets shot for the first time we're going to have it uh, catch on fire. That fire is going to deal damage over time to the barrel and eventually the barrel will then explode. So we're going to start off by uh, adding in a new component uh, into this blueprint and we're going to add a particle system component uh, just from here and see it will automatically get parented to the barrel which is fine and we're going to name this uh, fire PSC. Now when we name a variable inside the component editor it means it can be accessed through the graph editor so every every uh, component that we name we can click and drag in as a variable and do things with it so for particles we can turn them on, turn them off, scale them all those sort of things. Uh, I already have an existing uh, fire uh, particle here and you can see that if I just move this up slightly then the barrel look, looks like it's actually caught on fire. I'm going to go ahead and compile and save this blueprint now. So the number one thing is that what you see in the component data here is what you'll see in game when you place this blueprint. Now obviously we don't want this barrel to be on fire as soon as it gets placed. So we want to scroll down and disable this flag here called auto activate. When we turn that off you can see that when this blueprint actually gets constructed the fire is not there and it's not active. So what we can do is uh, in the um, in the graph editor is we can turn that back on. Uh, when we take damage. So there's a bit of logic that we have to do the first time here. Um, for instance, the first time the barrel takes damage we want to actually check if it's been damaged before. If it hasn't been then we want to turn on the fire effect. Um, after we do that, we want to, after we do that check, we want to run all the standard functionality where we take away the health um, and actually spawn the emitter and destroy the actor uh, providing our health um, has been reduced to zero. So to do these things sequentially, we add what we call a sequence node. A sequence node is under the flow control section, or you can just uh, type it there into the search box. And a sequence node does exactly what it says on the box. It does the first thing, then the second thing, then the third thing, etc., all in order. In this case, we're only doing two things. The first one is to check where the barrels receive damage and set the fire accordingly. And the next part is the rest of this. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on each of these pins and just remove these two pins here. I'm going to hold control and break this and I'm going to hook these back up here. So this is our first initial setup. Now what we also want is we want to add a new variable and it's going to be a boolean which contains true or false and we're going to call it B has been damaged. And this variable is going to hold whether um, this actor has already been damaged or not. So the first thing we want to do here is we're actually going to do another branch and the branch is going to depend on whether the barrel has been damaged or not. All right. Now if the barrel has been damaged we don't want to do anything here. If it hasn't been damaged that's when we want to actually activate our fire particle system component. So we can drag in that variable, drag off here for context sensitive and if we type activate we get an activate function here which will actually turn on this particle system and once we turn on the particle system we want to actually set the fact that the barrel has been damaged to true click and uh, drag this pin on and we want to set this to true we can compile this so our first step is we say we have a sequence node and the first part is have we been damaged if we have, we don't want to do anything. If we haven't, we want to activate the fire particle system component and then we want to set the fact that we've been damaged to true. Then the next step runs where we actually do all of our functionality that we had from the previous one. Now if I jump back into my test map and do a quick play in editor. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this barrel. And you can see the barrel now catches on fire as soon as I shoot it doesn't actually do anything, doesn't take damage when it's on fire. I have to keep shooting it before it's going to go and explode. So now what we do is actually make the barrel take damage while it's on fire. Now there's a couple of ways that we can go about this, but I'm going to demonstrate it using the receive tick event. 
So if we right click here, we navigate to add event. We have it in the very bottom here called receive tick. Now this event actually gets called on this blue tick, uh, blueprint every single frame, every single tick. And we get the delta seconds here, and delta seconds is the amount of time since it last received a tick. So that might be at 60 frames a second, something like 0.0169 seconds ago was the last time this object tick. So we can actually use this and do some really simple maths to establish damage over time. Um, so the next thing we want to do is add a new variable, which is going to be a float variable. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that to be damage per second. It's going to be editable and my tooltip is going to be amount of damage this barrel takes per second when it's on fire. And when I compile that and go back over to my default editor, you can see here the damage per second. I'm going to go ahead and set that to 2. So when it's on fire, it's going to take 2 damage per second. Now the first thing we want to do once again is we want to check whether our barrel has taken damage because we don't want this to be doing anything unless we've already taken damage. Remember we're on fire once we've taken damage. So our condition here with a simple branch once again is going to be whether we have been damaged. If we haven't, we don't want to do anything at all. If we have, then what we're going to do is we want to call this function which is called apply damage. Now this might look a bit overwhelming at first, there's a lot of parameters here, but we can step through these really easily uh, and figure out exactly what they all need to be set to. The first one is the actor that actually gets damaged, and that is this actor, so we can get a reference to ourself. So we're going to say we actually want to damage this actor. Um, I'll skip over damage and come back to that in a second. The event instigator is the controller responsible for causing a damage. In this case, we don't have a controller, we're just an object, so we can keep that completely empty. The damage causer is the actor that actually caused the damage, which once again is ourself. And the damage class, uh, the damage type class, we can just set to generic shooter damage type. You don't need to worry about that for now. As for base damage, this is the amount of damage that actually gets dealt to this actor. And like I said before, that's really simply going to be the amount of damage per second. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply that. Sorry, that's a star, not a X. And we're going to multiply that by delta seconds. Don't want to auto save. And we're going to hook that up to our base damage here. Now really simply, that's going to do damage over time. So if I click on compile, I save that. And if I go back over into Sanctuary, and I click Plain Editor. Now if I shoot the barrel, it should catch on fire. It's going to take 2 damage per second. And after a few seconds, it's going to explode. It's on fire, hopefully taking damage. And there we go, it's exploded after several seconds. Now we can verify whether this works in a couple of ways or not. And the one simple thing I want to do is, on this tick function, after we apply damage, I'm actually just going to go ahead and print the current amount of health out to the screen. If I drag off this, and type print, there's a function called print string, and this will print a certain string out to the screen down along the left hand side. What I want to print to the screen is health, but if you notice the input here is actually a string, what we can do is drag off health, and we get a context sensitive option to convert to a string. Then we can hook this straight up to in string here. Compile that, and now if I click play in the editor again, Now along the left hand side of the screen you should actually see the numbers ticking down as it takes damage over time. 3, 2, 1, 0, boom. And that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.